Good evening, everyone. This is Sister Gwendolyn Song. A lot of headlines going on today, and I got a pretty late start because I needed to get some sleep and I needed to be in prayer today. But I want to start off with Barbara Walters died peacefully in her New York home at the age of 93, a pioneer in journalism. And I remember watching her interviews as a youngster in my parents' bedroom. And they were the only ones who had a TV in our home. So whatever my parents were watching, that's what I had to watch. Now, Barbara Walters was the first female network news anchor to make $1 million uh, as an annual salary. And she did interview over 600 people during her career from the heads of state all the way down to the little people. Now, in, in another uh, news development, former Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, he dies at the, uh, may I say, the young age of 95. Uh, they called him a conservative pontiff, but most of the videos on the internet that discussed his dark activities have been removed. God have mercy on the victims. Now, we also have the U.S. snowstorm death toll. It is up to 61. 61 precious souls have been uh, taken from us because of the frozen dark winter storm. 37 of those lives uh, were from Buffalo, New York, a very deadly storm. And it seems that these dark winters will become the norm as the spirit of the Antichrist is rising across the globe. Now, the devil and his army, they enjoy manipulating the weather, and so we need to be able to adapt to these cold spells and these heat spells that he is casting across the earth, and we do need to band together and help one another as much as we can. Now, we have also, in another news story, 13 bison dead after a truck hits a herd near Yellowstone National Park. 13 bison were killed or had to be euthanized after their herd was struck by a semi-truck in an accident with two other vehicles on a dark Montana road just outside of Yellowstone National Park. This uh, happened on Wednesday. Now, some of the bison were killed in the crash and some had to be euthanized because of the severity of their uh, injuries. I love the bison. They're look at these pictures of these giant, uh, gentle giant creatures. Now, no one in the semi-truck or the other two vehicles were hurt. This incident happened around 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, and it was on Highway 191. Uh, and that is the road that services... Um, the western entrance to Yellowstone National Park. Bison in the region, they often congregate near the roadways in the winter because it's easier for them to navigate in the heavy snow and they can be hard to see at night because their fur is dark and because their eyes do not reflect light. Unlike deer, you know, you're driving down a country road and you can see the 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 eyes of the deer and catch them in your headlight but with bison it is not like that so hate to hear about any story where there are mass animal deaths don't you friends now i want to go on to this next headline russia to supply iran with 24 advanced sukhoi fighter jets this is very uh, sad news i wonder what the plan is behind this strategic military uh, movement starting a week ago reports began emerging in the middle east uh, regional media including in iran and israeli news sources that russia they're going to soon provide the islamic republic with dozens of sokoi fighter jets i sure hope they don't use those on israel or on the u.s and their allies but things are heating up friends Western intelligence officials are even making the claim. Iranian state media named Tania, it wrote days ago that Iran will soon receive 24 of the fourth generation twin engine super maneuverable fighter jets that are primarily used for air superiority missions. God help our, uh, God help all of the people around the globe, friends. 
In the final news, we have missiles rain down on Ukraine as Putin gives combative New Year speech. This is from the Washington Post out of Kiev, Ukraine. Now, as Moscow launched a fresh barrage of strikes against Ukraine on Saturday, Putin gave an unusually, unusually aggressive pre-recorded address, which was broadcast as Russians in the Far East began their New Year's celebrations. This New Year's message was notably different from previous years, a reflection of the new path the country has taken since Russia invaded Ukraine this February. In the address, which was broadcast at midnight on Russian state television, in line with the country's 11 different time zones, Putin said Russia was fighting in Ukraine to protect its motherland. And it called 2022 a year of hard, necessary decisions and fateful events that had laid the foundation of Russia's future and independence. Those are very strong comments from Vladimir Putin. Now, this speech was set up against a backdrop of Russian military service members instead of the typical wintry vista of the Kremlin, Putin's speech marked a significant shift in tone with more combative and nationalistic instead of festive and celebratory. In this nine-minute message, the longest New Year's address in Putin's two-decade rule, he thanked the Russian army for its strength of spirit and courage before launching into a tirade against the West, which he has repeatedly blamed for provoking the offensive. Now, this is what he said. This is a quote, unquote, the West lied about peace, but was preparing for aggression. And he said, is cynically using Ukraine and its people to weaken and divide Russia. We have never and will never allow anyone to do this to us. At, as the first footage of the speech was broadcast, dozens of missiles rained down on Kiev and other regions in Ukraine. Several explosions were heard in Kiev, and a Washington Post journalist saw from her apartment window what appeared to be a Ukrainian air defense rocket intercepting a Russian missile. What a sight to see. And it was unclear if the sound of the explosions were from the air defense systems or missiles hitting their targets. Now, friends, that is a very serious development. We have Vladimir Putin proclaiming to the world on uh, New Year's Eve what he will and will not tolerate. And then we also have the story of Russia to supply Iran with 24 advanced Sukhoi fighter jets. I see escalation coming in the very near future, don't you? Now, I wonder what the year 2023 will bring to the table. You know, I'm wondering, will there be a peace accord written that will officially divide God's holy land? Or will, will there be a peace accord that will put a stop to the Ukrainian war? And will those who hate the U.S. and its meddling in other nations' affairs finally say enough is enough? And then they start dropping bombs over our major cities. I continue to pray, and I hope that you will too, that cooler heads will prevail and that Jesus will prepare the earth for his arrival. Now, I still don't believe that the earth is ready for his coming. There is way too much pride and religious spirits going on out there. People are truly not repenting. People are still offended about Christmas and holidays, and they are not keeping the main thing, Jesus Christ, as the main thing. And few pastors are even calling the churches to repent. Now, I don't think that pastors even know how to explain to their flocks what real true repentance is because they're not fully surrendered themselves. And there are some good pastors out there, don't get me wrong. But all in all, I want to say that the condition of the United States of America very much mirrors the conditions of the churches in the United States of America. 
lack of focus on the main thing. The main thing being that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. And we need to humble ourselves as a nation, as a people, before his throne of grace. We need to stop nitpicking with each other and we need to seek the face of God. Now, friends, I pray that everyone out there will have a very safe New Year's Eve. We bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will all have a happy and a godly New Year. And I will talk to you again real soon. Good night.